Now, it's one month since the Taliban took control of Afghanistan following the U.S. evacuation of its troops. The militant group inherited a country in deep crisis with tens of thousands of people facing food and economic insecurity. On top of that, social unrest is mounting. Women's protests take place almost on a daily basis, demanding that they have equal rights. For more on what's going on, let's speak to Obedullah Bahir, a lecturer at the American University. University of Afghanistan in Kabul. Many thanks for joining us. Um, obviously concerns that Afghanistan is facing both economic and humanitarian c- catastrophe as winter approaches. What's day-to-day life like right now for most Afghans? Thank you for having me, uh, Paul. Um, Well, uh, the recent developments have been that the Taliban managed to announce their own exclusive interim government. Um, There was uh, some incongruence with regards to what they heard from the expectations of the international community with regards to inclusivity. And they thought that that meant that inclusivity of ethnicities from within the Taliban. Um, That hindered their chances at international recognition, something that we are having an issue with. Um, Secondly, the Taliban are having a difficult time to adjust to their new role of governance and policing from being an insurgent group, which is why we see heavy-handed responses to the protests that are happening within the country. Um, There are hurdles to be surmounted with regards to education, with regards to gender participation, and then with regards to welfare, um, because there is a humanitarian crisis within the midst of 2022. 97% of Afghanistan's population is reported to go beneath the poverty line. These are all concerns that Afghans have, uh, most importantly, to survive. How fundamental are the changes? Has there been a massive change compared to what it was like only a few weeks ago? I think it's only fair to segregate Afghanistan society based on the different worlds that exist within the country. There is the rural population, which represents the majority of Afghanistan, then the urban population within the major cities. For the major cities, life has changed drastically because the whole idea of daily jobs, uh, the government was the biggest employer within the country. Those have been disrupted, international governmental organizations, and then um, embassies of different countries, they've all packed up and left, which means a lot of people are unemployed. And then there's a huge cash flow issue because Afghanistan's reserves have dried up. A lot of Afghanistan's foreign reserves that exist within the United States have been frozen by the United States. And that means the country barely has any funds to move forward with, uh, meaning people cannot access their own money within the banks. They're only allowed to withdraw $200 a week, um, which is barely enough uh, to keep a society uh, from collapsing in on itself. In terms of women's rights, let's touch upon that. We hear uh, reports of girls not being able to attend school, of uh, female judges being forced into hiding. Uh, What's the situation? We have to break that down as well. So the Taliban announced that they're going to temporarily ban girls from going to school from class 6 to 12. However, uh, whatever supposed time frame that was promised isn't being delivered on. Um, The problem with asking for more time is that it one needs transparency with regards to process and how progress is being made with regards to meeting those goals. And secondly, there has to be a time frame, both of which are missing in this matter. Uh, With regards to higher education, women have been allowed to participate, however, through and within segregated environments. All of that being said, uh, for women to actually take part in the process of education, there has to be enough uh, funding and they have to be making money. And the fact that the government doesn't look like it plans on letting women work in the short term um, means that these women would not have money to uh, actually pursue their higher education. That's where the international community really needs to step in. And if the government cannot fulfill its role, it can directly connect with institutes and offer scholarships or alternative learning methods for women and other people that can't afford education anymore in this country. Mr. Bahir, many thanks for joining us. Many, many thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.